So our last speaker this morning is Dr. Sarah Murray, who's a Wellcome Trust Clinical Research Fellow from the University of Edinburgh, and her title is Gestational Age at Delivery of Twins and the Risk of Perinatal Death, Population Study of 43,000 Twins in Scotland. Sarah. Thank you very much to the organising committee for giving me the opportunity to speak today. I've chosen to focus on twin pregnancy in my PhD. Twins are a very high-risk pregnancy. They're associated with three times the increased rate of perinatal mortality compared to singletons. 50% of them deliver prematurely. And there's a whole host of other problems listed here that affect both the mums and the babies. And optimising the timing of delivery is a key strategy in reducing perinatal mortality. And this is a trade-off between stillbirth, so infants born without signs of life, and neonatal death, which is infants born alive who die within 28 days. And there's still a lack of evidence regarding the optimum time to deliver twins. So for the Amal Clooney's of the world who want to know when the best time for their twins to be born, we still don't have an answer for this. Twins are often excluded from epidemiological studies. This is because their outcomes are paired, making the analysis difficult. And because they're only 3% of the population, it's very difficult to get a sample size large enough to perform randomized trials of rare outcomes. And so one of the ways to do this is to use big data. And I've been using routinely collected Scottish maternity data to look at outcomes in twins. This is an efficient and cost-effective way of performing cohort studies. And it gives you a population-based sample, so it's less subject to selection bias. And we're lucky in Scotland to have good routine collected data, which allows us to link, for example, health records to education records. So the research question I was trying to address in this study is what is the impact of gestational age on delivery on perinatal mortality in twins? As I said, this was a population cohort study of twins born in Scotland from 1980, with the primary outcome of perinatal mortality, which is a combination of stillbirth and neonatal death. And I adjusted for a number of potential confounders, including maternal age and smoking. This slide summarizes the study population. And after data cleaning, which is taking out obvious outliers in the data, I had just over 43,000 individual twins available for the analysis. I won't go through the statistical analysis in too much detail in the interest of time, but just to summarize, I use multi, multiple imputation to deal with missing covariates whilst maintaining my sample size, and I use multivariate generalized estimating equation logistic regression to look at the relationship between perinatal death and week of gestation. In terms of the demographics of the population, most women were aged between 25 and 30. There's roughly an equal number of male and female babies and an equal spread across the deprivation categories. This slide summarizes the results of the multivariate analysis. I'll just take you through this table. Each row here represents a different week of gestation. Here we have deaths in ongoing pregnancies, deaths in the week of gestation, the odds ratio of this with its associated p-value, and the adjusted odds ratio, which is adjusted for the demographic confounders at the bottom, and its p-value associated with it. I've already clicked this, but you can see very clearly that delivery before 37 weeks is associated with an increased risk of death compared to remaining in utero in twins. When we look at 37 to 38 weeks, there appears to be no benefit or risk of being delivered or remaining in utero, as shown by these confidence intervals here, which cross one. We should interpret the 39-week category with caution. Here, most of the babies will have been delivered at this point. It only accounts for 4% of the population. And again, this is shown by the wider confidence interval here, um, and making this estimate less reliable. <laughs> So I went on to do a competing risk analysis. This is a slightly different way of modeling it. This time it looks at the risk of stillbirth against the risk of neonatal death, aiming to find where the risks are balanced. This time it compares week, a week of gestation to the following week of gestation. And you can see very clearly here that a positive result favors delivery. And these results appear to be balanced around 37 weeks gestation. So in summary, I've shown that delivery before 37 weeks is associated with an increased risk of death compared to remaining in utero. For babies born at 37 weeks compared to 38 weeks, the risks of neonatal death and stillbirth appear to be balanced. And this information should be used when counselling women regarding timing of delivery of twins. This is the largest UK population study of twins. But of course, there are some caveats to the use of routinely collected data. 
There's some problems with misclassification occasionally um, and also residual confounding. So the next steps of this work, I'd like to look at perinatal morbidity compared to week of gestation. This will include admission to the neonatal unit and APGAR scores. And then I will look at the long-term educational outcomes in the twins based on the week of gestation. Thank you very much. Well done. Quest questions for Sarah? John. How, do, how does that risk curve compare with singleton pregnancies? So the risk in singletons is much later. The risk of um, stillbirth and neonatal death goes up exponentially around 42 weeks of gestation. Anybody else? Thank you. Do you have any data on identical twins, uh, Monica Ionic? Um, so it's, it's a bit difficult with twins. You, what we care about as obstetricians is how many placentas there are, um, because that really affects how you treat them clinically. And unfortunately, that's not, it's not re recorded in the Scottish data routinely. So the only thing I can actually look at is sex discordant twins, because I know that they each have their own placenta. But it's a very important question. And discordance in gender, does that affect your, your it, odds it ratios? Gives, I've, I've done it with sex discordant twins. I, I have got a slide, but um, it shows exactly the same results. Okay. Yep. I know you adjusted for the year of delivery, Sarah, but mm -hmm. I'm just wondering in terms of the time course of yep. the best point of delivery, did that change as the years went by? <laughs> A uh, very good question, and yes, it, it definitely does because I think obstetric practice and neonatal practice will have changed over the years. So there's lots of different ways. I know that you'll know how you could account for year of delivery, and I chose to categorise it and put it in as a covariate. Anna? So I have a similar question. It, would it be helpful, because of changing obstetric practice and age of women delivering, etc., would it be helpful to look at the, at the data in 10, 10 years or five years inter intervals to compare like with like rather than you know, the 80s practice with now, which we all know is very different? Yes, I think that definitely would be. The problem is with the sample size, and I'm looking at a very rare outcome, perinatal mortality. So if, if I did that, I'd have a much smaller sample per five-week category, but yes, it's very important. Great, any last questions? Somebody else? Somebody else? I can't see, but if you've got a microphone, speak. <coughs> That was a good presentation. Um, what measures of social class did you adjust for? Was it an individual measure like paternal occupation at birth, or was it a um, community measure of deprivation, like um, the me community measures of deprivation? So you asked me the deprivation category, is that right? Yes. Yes. So that's recorded routinely for mothers in Scotland, so I used their car stairs deprivation category. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah.